Welcome, 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 humans and gentle humans, to San Francisco's second ever literary salon. <laughs> Meg Elison, uh, I'm just reading what they've written for me. Meg Elison is older than Sin, uh, and her hair can grow no darker. She wants to basically do it with the abyss. Every midwinter, uh, an ancient evil with flesh of oak and eyes of undead suns pleads with her to bestride the world like a colossus, meeting out pleasure and pain in defiance of desert as a fundamental refutation of God. Each year she's like, um, pass. <laughs> her acceptance draws near, and there will be a wailing and a gnashing of teeth like the opening bars of a really serious death metal track. Maggie Ellison. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. How are we doing? <laughs> this story is called First Date. She met him on one of the better dating sites. It billed itself as the sane and sensible one, not for hookups or casuals or predators. Users were required to answer detailed personal questions about themselves, sleeping habits, religious beliefs, political affiliations. And the harassment reporter's tools were easy to use, and the policies were actually enforced. So she felt safe <laughs> and secure in agreeing to a first date. She was Lee, a woman in her late twenties, more likely to be called cute than beautiful. She got photographed poorly, she thought her nose was to blame. First dates invariably told her she looked better in person than she did on the internet, and she invariably said something back about that being better than the alternative. He was no different in that respect. He was Phil, a man in his early thirties, unremarkable to look at. He said he was obviously Greek, and he was. His nose gave him the same troubles in photos as hers did. He had thick, gorgeous, shiny hair. It was his best feature. Lee did not feel that pop of connection, that little zing of an electrical circuit completing itself, so she tried to overlook its lack. He pulled her into a hug by way of greeting and put a little kiss on her cheek. She didn't love that either, but she thought it might be put down to a different cultural expectation about first meetings. He sat on the stool opposite her. He had worn jeans, she had worn a dress. Expectations are the worst part of a first date. So you're in marketing. <laughs> Lee nodded and smiled at the waiter when he brought their drinks. It's the best thing I could think of to do with an English degree. He did not smile back and he didn't touch his drink. I have an English degree too. She smiled a little. Yeah, it's in your profile? I figured we could get a little tipsy and then maybe arm wrestle over the serial comma. <laughs> Phil reached for his drink and looked over the rim of it, taking in her body. Oh, I'll bet we'll agree on that. The serial comma, the Oxford comma, really, <laughs> is necessary to avoid structural ambiguity. Sure, he said, taking a drink. But you can always just rewrite the sentence and you can avoid both. He laughed ruefully. Sure, but you can get around anywhere you want by avoiding the freeway. Why would you? A little silence ensued and Lee watched to see how he'd handle it. He looked around. Not at her. There was something uneasy in him, but she decided it was just nerves. Who was the best version of themselves on a first date? Nobody, that's who. She wasn't winning any prizes for smooth tonight either. So you mentioned that you like to cook. Uh, what else do you do in your free time? He brightened at once. Well, I, I put the English degree to work in other ways. I write a little. She smiled at him. I write short stories too. I've been published a couple of times. Oh, really? I'd love to take a look at your stuff, maybe give you some notes. <laughs> That'd be great. <laughs> Have you sold any? Not yet, he said, finishing his drink. But I've got a real feel for Flash. Oh, I can't write Flash at all, she said, laughing a little again. Trying to keep it light, already knowing this thing was on its way down. <laughs> I can't say that much with so few words. That part's nothing. Phil signaled for another drink and shoved his jacket off. Lee saw his dark underarms and tried to empathize. It was warmer in here than it was outside. It would have been easy to get sweaty after the transition. And maybe he'd be embarrassed if he saw her looking. Do you want to read one of my stories? He looked as expectant as a puppy who sees the tennis ball. <laughs> sure, she said, deeply regretting her inability to say no. <laughs> here, he said, phone instantly in hand. I'll send you one right now. It's maybe my best flash ever. Oh. Oh, okay. <laughs> she gave him her email, deflating. He sent the file over at once. Go ahead, he said, open it. She looked up from her phone, the notification just buzzing to confirm that the email was received. What, right now? Yeah, he grinned, then we can talk about it. That's better conversation fodder than most of the bullshit small talk that sustains most first dates, right? I guess so, she said. I'll give you a minute alone with it. 
<laughs> he slid off his stool. He winked before heading to the bathroom. She did not watch him go. Winking isn't that weird, she reminded herself. It can be really endearing sometimes. <laughs> Grandfather's wink. <laughs> she tapped her phone and opened the attention attachment in her email. It opened in her reader and she frowned at it. He must have sent the wrong file. This wasn't a flash story. It was nearly 20 pages long. <laughs> the title of the story was First Date. Lee's stomach did a little roll over maneuver. If he had just wanted to trick her into reading his porn, wouldn't that have been easier over the internet? <laughs> it took a special breed of troll to ask her out on a date and then see her reaction in real time. Or something worse. She was skimming it about five pages deep when he got back. So did you read it? Uh, still working on it. Hey, did you mean to send me a 20-page story? I thought you were going to send me a flash. He nodded, grinning. Yeah, that's a flash. It's like a short sketch type thing, not a full story. I see. She did not tell him he was using the term incorrectly. <laughs> her phone felt too heavy in her hand. Go, go ahead and finish. I'm going to order us another round. Oh, okay. She picked the phone back up and continued reading while he wandered off. The story took forever to get going. Almost all of it was written in dialogue, well, monologue, really. It was the voice of a young man talking nervously to a girl on a first date. In all the spots where she should have said something back, the narrative just switched to describing her in detail. <laughs> <laughs> the curve of her lips, the shine of her hair, her ample breasts and neat trimmed waist, the cold blue cast of her skin, the torn, ragged edges of her fingernails, her open, unblinking blue eyes. Did you get to the twist yet? She jumped a little in her seat. He had a drink in either hand, and he was beaming, just beaming. <laughs> it is so great to watch your face change while you read it. <laughs> it's a real treat. I can't wait to hear what you think about it. I'm almost done, she said. There is a moment on every bad date when a person must decide whether the badness is worth making a scene. <laughs> this moment is agony for anyone who has been taught through direct and indirect lessons that their own safety is less important than someone else's feelings. The simplest thing to do was just get up and walk out. But she found that she could not do it. Her legs would not carry her. Her spine would not stiffen. She felt limp and weak as in a nightmare when the impulse to run gets lost somewhere between the dreaming country of mind and muscle. Do you get it? He asked, breathing in her ear. She's been dead this whole time. <laughs> he killed her, like, first thing. <laughs> I get it, she said, barely able to speak above a whisper. She didn't look at him as he went on about his process. She made minimal responses and held her knees together. She paid the bill when it came and said yes when he said, asked if he could call her. She let him kiss her on her burning cheek before sliding into a cab, quivering the whole way home. Later, in the shower, she would feel her own pulse in her neck, in the center of her chest. He hadn't killed her, but she had become his cold, compliant girl anyway. She turned the dial until the water was boiling hot, until she knew by the reddening of her skin that she was alive. She could text him in the morning, tell him that she wanted a second date. She could get him back to her place and kill him. <laughs> he wasn't afraid of her in the slightest. He didn't even know he should be. It would be easy, easy as anything. She could write a story, an actual flash of no more than a thousand words <laughs> about killing him instead of actually doing it. She could publish it, make a little money on it, cash the check that earned her, and buy a nice vibrator. That'd show him. <laughs> she could write about it directly in one of those confessional style essays that young women often write, giving people the opportunity to blame them for who they fucked or how they fucked, to tell them that they deserve whatever they got, because women always do. That would make her a little money. It would make her feel a little better. Name and shame. Speak truth to the piddling power of a no-talent, ain't-shit-ass dude with a pen. She could write it obliquely, as if it had happened to somebody else, as if it were a hypothetical. She could read it aloud. She could perform it, pretending to be too clever and too smart to get into this kind of bind. She could be the writer, the one that it didn't happen to, the smart one talking to the corpse the whole time, the one who won. She could tell the audience it wasn't that bad. It could have been way worse. I'm here. I'm fine. I'm telling the tale. She stood in the hot, pounding shower, 
knowing that she had so many options, and that not one of them really had the blood tang of revenge that she craved every day and today. Her yowling did not even penetrate the plastic shell of her shower. Upstairs, her neighbors slept, never knowing a thing. Thank you. That's a bad thing.